I wanted to talk about what is arguably the most commonly asked front-end interview question for a phone screen or even an on-site interview at companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, Uber, and so on. And that is the progress bar question. This question is relatively simple. Build a progress bar that will fill up in X amount of seconds. And with a phone screen, you only have one chance to get it right, and it's a pass or a fail. The reason it's so common is you have to pull on multiple front end areas of expertise, including CSS, JavaScript, HTML, and consider different approaches. So let's dive into it. I'm gonna show you two different approaches. One is a lot shorter than the other using CSS, and the other is using JavaScript with a set interval function. All right, on my left here, I have my code editor VS Code. And on the right, I have an open web browser with nothing running yet. What I'm gonna do is just create a new HTML file, open it in my code editor and start what's called a live server, which just shows updates as I save my file. Right off the bat, let's just create a bar container uh, with class called bar. This will be the outer container of our bar. And in fact, it would be better to call it bar container. Now within a style tag, I'm going to give my body some base style. So this, we consider the bar's empty state. It's at 0%, nothing's in the bar. And then within the bar container, which we'll create our second element in, we can put a uh, actual bar class with nothing inside of it. This is called a self-closing tag. And then we will, for that, put a background color of green and then a height of 100%. So we're filling the container vertically. And just to show that our inner bar is actually appearing, let's do a width of 10%, which will remove afterwards. So I can manually set the width and it will fill up my bar to a certain amount. Um, but like I said, let's make it zero because we want our bar to be filled with JavaScript. Okay, now we've got our main HTML and CSS elements on the page. What we wanna do next is manipulate them with JavaScript to actually animate our bar. And the way we're gonna do that is by creating a function here in the script tag called fill bar. And it's gonna take as an argument a number of seconds. Now, on the button itself, I'm going to create an on-click attribute and pass in a string that is my function name and then calling it with the argument um, two. Let's just do two seconds to start with. So every time I click that button, function's going to be called and let's just verify that with this console log over here. Clicked, okay. So now what I want to do is use a method called query selector to actually select my inner bar that's gonna be animated. When I do this, document query selector, I am just gonna, by the dot syntax, select the class bar. Now that I have my bar, I want to update the style at a certain interval, which is every X amount of seconds, I'm gonna run a function. Now, I want my arrow function to run every x milliseconds, which is going to be seconds times uh, 1,000, converts it to milliseconds, and then divided by 100%. So this function is going to basically run this often, and each time it runs, it will update the bar by 1%, and it's going to be going fast enough where the bar is going to look smooth, even though it's jumping up by 1% every time, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. The last thing we need is actually the current percent value, I'll call that at percent, and then we'll initialize it to zero. Inside the function, we wanna uh, increase that at percent by one every time. This is updating the variable in place. The most important thing I wanna do is set the, the width of the bar, bar.style.width, that is setting the width property in the CSS here to my at percent, and then we can't forget to put in a percent sign or it won't work. Finally, this is the kind of tricky part. 
we have to check if the value is greater than 100% for at percent because we can't go over 100% or we'd go outside of the container. And then if that's true, then we clear the interval, meaning we stop this function from running. Let's now move our console log to inside here. And this will give us a little bit of telemetry that is observability into how our function is running. So let's actually see if this works. I see all my numbers down here. I'm actually going up to 101. So we don't want that. Let's do greater than or equal. Refresh. And my bar is filling up perfectly. That is basically one solution you could do. Check this out. You can simplify it so much by just using CSS. So let me just show you the CSS way, which only takes about 10 seconds to write, which is crazy. The time of implementation, which is a lot lower in CSS, that is the time it takes to actually write the function. So if you really want to wow your interviewer, you can do it this way. We're going to leave the fill bar function here and delete the inside, except for selecting our bar variable. When this happens, we want to set the width straight away to 100%. We also want to set what's called the transition property on our bar to um, a value equivalent to what we're passing in for seconds. So I'm using a string interpolation tag, which allows me to pass variables inside a string. And then I am going to add a transition property um, to my bar element. So one second, we need an S here, or however many, many seconds, in this case two. And then all will apply to all, but we really only need it applied to width. So let's do that. And then I saved. And it's really crazy how little code I need to do this with CSS. So if it were me, I would do it the second way. Being able to do the basic implementation like this will definitely get you past the phone screen for a entry level position. If you're interviewing for a higher level position, you might get an extension on this problem, assuming you solve it efficiently. Hopefully you can practice this and start to feel really comfortable doing it. It's one of the questions I've heard multiple people get. So if you're interviewing to be a front end developer, definitely learn this one and get it down. Anyway, good luck with your interviewing, good luck with your learning, and comment if you have any questions. All right, I'll see you guys soon.